now we're going to start on just the regular mini album. And what I want to do is take this apart and show you how to put this together. So this base is, again, from Ginny Bolin. And you just simply take out all the pieces. And you can see it comes with two rings. And I set this red piece aside because you can see it's perforated to use as interior decorations. So you just start putting the pieces together however you see fit. My ring is off. So we'll just put that back on. Um, I put the divider tabs in and then I use these kind of ledger tape type pages in between and they're sandwiched um, in different ways. And then I put the pocket in the back. Now I could change this all when I start to work on the album, but it was just a good uh, thought process to just put it in and get it started. But now what we need to do is work on the covers because I don't know about you, but that doesn't scream December to me. So I'm going to set this stuff aside and we'll begin work on the cover. Okay, so I have my cover down and we're going to work on this. This is plain chipboard um, that was found in the Ginny Bolin base. But what I want you to note is that for the front cover, the holes need to be going to the left. So if I'm looking at this, this is the front cover and the back cover. So when I put it together, it looks like this. So just be mindful of where the holes are when you're working. Now, if you get in a bind and you cover them up and you don't know exactly where they are, it's okay punch new holes, it'll work. Uh, but before we begin that, I want to talk to you because I'm going to use some pattern paper on the cover. And there's lots of pattern paper in the kit, but I want to show you how you can get multiple cuts out of one sheet of 12 by 12. So this album is 5 by 7, so if we are looking at to make 5 by 7 pages, all we have to do is cut the first line at seven down and go across okay and then you're left with this little strip and if we do it like this so you can see okay so you do the first cut at seven down then you cut a five another five and then you're left over a little strip and this piece down here is another page so you have another five by seven page here and you're left with a five by five square here. So when you look at this, you can get one, two, three pages out of one sheet plus a half a page and a decorative strip. So what I would recommend is go through your pages and kind of cut them down so that way you have multiple options for your pages. All right, now let's take a look at that cover. Okay, I just showed you how to cut the pattern paper and we're getting ready to do the cover, but I wanted to take a quick moment to show you how many pages you get. And I went ahead and cut all mine down. I'm showing you like the front and the back so that I have them ready to go as an option because I know that this is the largest that this paper is going to be. So I'm okay with going ahead and cutting it down to the size of the album because I can always go smaller. So, gosh, tons of paper. Um, I even cut down the uh, vellum paper here because again, I know it's gonna fit in here. That's the five by seven and of course I have the little five by fives and these little strips which are, I think, let's see, they are two by seven. And then I always save these little strips here because manufacturers have gotten really smart and clever and included little strips of the pattern paper or sometimes this one by Lawn Fawn is really cute. This is Chic Tags and it has all those little sayings. And the same with Lawn Fawn, they have the little ones. So I save those too. The only papers I haven't cut down yet, and I say yet because I know I will, are these tags because I'm not sure if I want to use the back side for the red or these parts for the tag so I'm gonna to wait to decide that um, and then 
I am going to wait to decide how I want to cut this down. Most likely I will probably just do sections like I did here because this part capturing the date isn't as important when I have items like this and those wooden tags to do that. So I like it just as the see-through. So I'll probably end up cutting that down. But this way, let me take this, set it aside. I have options for what I want to do on the front cover. So there we go. So I can sit here and pull these out and figure out exactly what I want to do. Now the 5 by 7 isn't exactly going to fit on here, but that's where these come in and you can add anything on top of it. So all of a sudden I have this cute cover on the album and I can sit around and play and figure out what exactly I want on it. Maybe I want oh, this fun North Pole on it. Or maybe it goes like that so I can see the North Pole. So as you can see, I can just sit here, pull these, play, and make options with it and decide what I want the base with. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the video on fast forward and figure out what exactly I want. Like I said, I figured out the basics of it, and while I was thinking about it, I think I might actually slip this underneath and give it even another layer. But I first need to put down these back pages. So there's corners that are rounded on here, and I may have a corner rounder that matches up, and I may not. So the easiest way to do it for me, and I'm just kind of putting this on. I really want to actually a strong grip on the side, so I'm going to do it a little heavier. Is to line up these edges here and here and just kind of let it hang off those corners. And then I'm just going to take my scissors and trim it down. And then if I want, I can even take some sandpaper and kind of sand those edges like so. Then I'm going to take my next strip, put it down. And 
And again, trim those edges. And if I have any overhang, I'm just going to trim it off. Okay, and I'm just going to sand, bring some of that white core up, and give it a finished edge. Okay, and I talked about doing something here. I'm going to use this stencil with this like. This is kind of like a northern star kind of star, or Christmas star, if you will, holiday star. So I'm going to use some um, modeling paste. And modeling paste is just like a stiff paste. Once it dries, it's really uh, stiff. And I'm going to take some, this is the gold dabber from from uh, Ranger Ink. I'm just going to open it up. I actually may even go in with my palette knife and scoop out some of that paint. And I'm just going to mix it in. So now I have a gold texture paste. Now, if you didn't want the texture or you just wanted the gold, you could just take the dabber and put it on through the stencil. But I think this is going to give it that nice raised look. And I'm going to scoot my stencil over so that I get three rows of this star. Okay, and then with a palette knife, I'm just going to scrape it through the stencil. I'm going to lift it up and move it. And you can see I kind of waited to where I was going with this one so I could, I didn't do the last two so I could move these into place. And what I love are these ones at the bottom just going off the page. It gives it that dynamic movement. So I'm even going to smush in there. So there you go. It adds really just this beautiful touch. You can see it's already shimmering. And I'm going to wait for that to dry. Okay, I'm going to set this aside to dry. And while I'm doing that, while that's drying, I'm going to work on this little piece here. And you can see this is already dry, so I'm not worried about that. But I want to bring this together. And a good thing is, is this with this open, you can see where you're going to like it best, you know. That's kind of fun with little bits of land and the sea in there. Um, this is also kind of fun with this up here. I think I'm actually going to go something like this. Okay, so how I do this is I know I want to put this gold over here. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut out a small strip. I'm just eyeballing it to go right over here. And I'm just going to get my adhesive right over that. Place it, make sure you're placing it the gold side down if that's the side you want. And now I can just go over this. Let me move this piece. And because I've moved this piece all around a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and add a little glue onto there. And then again, find my perfect spot. And adhere it down. I'm going to go ahead and push that December 2013, or the year, down and then trim around it. Perfect. 
Now this strip I'll set aside because who knows if I'll use it or not. Now I don't know about you, but I'm never satisfied with enough glue on that. So I'm going to add some um, liquid glue onto these to make sure that they really stick. And you can even see some of the chipboards peeling off. It happens. So I'm just going to add a little glue. Again, that's a little peeling off. Okay, I can see that's got a little bit to dry, but this card is done until I can layer it on there, and then I can move on to the interior. Okay, now I've got the bases down and my little uh, instant little title here, and it's coming together nicely. I know I'm going to throw some of these little, uh, I don't even know, paper confettis on here, and if three is good, five is better you know, odd numbers. Uh, we'll see how they land. I may even end up doing seven of them. Who knows? But the Polaroid still, I think it needs just a little something. So I may do, take one of these vellum stickers, you can see, and act like they are attaching this. Um, and I may even go for that gold since it's nice and reminiscent of that. I'm also going to put a sticker here and then finish the piece off with some uh, twine, baker's twine. So let's get that done. And I even kind of like this placement. I may even do something like this. And uh, get that glued down so I don't forget it. Mm -hmm. 